that mischief on the mind. Select ingredients and combine. Brew the elixir and set in motion. The mad science of potion explosion. <laughs> In case it wasn't obvious from the anachronistic habiliments, I'm a bit old school. Which here means that I fancy a game on my table, above one on my phone. But phone games are everywhere, and they're quite popular with the wee whelps. Today's game is certainly informed from the world of pocket gaming, where you be crushing jeweled candy. In fact, it is one. Potion Explosion is a race to concoct the superior amount of enchanted cocktails, using marbles to track your progress. But let's break out the cauldron and take a closer look. Each player gets a desk to work on. Drop it in front of you and leave some room to build. Determine your first player and give them the first player token. Sort out all the potions by their eight types. You can tell the difference by the stoppers on top. Now take two of those types out of the game. You'll have to check them out next time. Deal two potion bottles per player in the center. They should be recipe side up, and they must have the star icon on them. This just means they're starting level potions. The first player takes one, and then go clockwise until everyone has one. Then the last player takes a second one, and go counterclockwise until they're all gone. Shuffle what's left and make five stacks that all can reach. Now the part you've been waiting for. Take that bag of marbles and dump them into the tank of the dispenser. They may need a little help getting into the holes. Do this as randomly and as evenly as you can manage. Place the skill tokens into a countdown stack like this. If there are two players, put four. If there's three players, put five. And if there's four players, you'll need six. Finally, pile the little help tokens. And you're ready to begin. When it's your turn, there's a few things you can do. First, the most common. Choose a nice shiny marble from one of the dispenser rows, that is, from one of the eight visible ones in a row. Now if this causes a collision, it's said to explode, and you get all of the connected marbles of that color. If it causes a chain reaction, then just keep taking them. This is a mandatory action. Here's an optional one. Once per turn, you can get a little help. And this means take a free marble and ignore any explosions it causes. The cost of this action is you get stuck with one of these tokens, which shaves a few points off your final score. But if you think it's worth the trade-off, you can do this once per turn. Another thing you may choose to do is use a potion you've completed. Turn the potion upside down so it looks like a light bulb and activate its effect. The back of the book gives you the lowdown on what these brews do. You want to keep this handy. So you've got a handful of marbles. Now what? Well, firstly, you must put any matching colors on recipe spaces on potions you're currently brewing. Then put any others, up to three, into your reserve, which is called your ingredient pool. And you can trade marbles between this and your hand freely. If you fill up all spaces on a potion, ding, it's done. Dump all of its marbles back into the dispenser and flip it to its finished side. Then move it below your desk. Apparently, this is where you hide the good stuff. Once you've done as much as you can or want, it's time to end your turn. Here are the steps. Any marbles left in your hand go into the tank. If you've got less than two active potions, fill the empty Bunsen spots from the five piles. Just take from the top of any stack. Now, check to see if you've earned any achievements. These earn you a shiny new skill point. If you complete three of a kind, you get one. If you complete five different kinds of potions, you get one. There's a maximum of one per achievement per requirement and all of your finished potions are considered. Lastly, you would check for game end. It's triggered by one of two conditions. Either the last skill point is taken, or at the end of a turn, there's no potions left to take. In this case, keep taking turns until the player to the first player's right finishes a turn. If anyone needs another skill token in this part of the game, grab from the common pile. Once you've finished all your turns, just add up the scores. That is the value of your completed potions, plus any skill points. Minus two points for each of those pesky little help tokens. Highest score wins, of course. And then everyone plays with the marbles, naturally. Outside of Gloomhaven, I don't believe I've ever suffered such fatigue punching a game from its sprues. Well, the blisters have finally healed, at least. 
but allow necessary time for some preparation before you can get down to business on this one. Not only are there massive amounts of potion bottles, but each one is riddled with holes. That is, they will be once you've poked them out. You're gonna wanna brew some caffeine to help you survive this part. The dispenser is a stunning piece of origami on top of that. Ah, you'll run right into a two-page construction tutorial soon after cracking open the manual. Now, there are some custom wooden type ones to be found on Etsy, but you might as well put this thing together regardless. I mean, you want to get started, right? It's suggested that you put a few dabs of glue in the right places, and who can argue with that? It's also mighty tricky convincing the marbles to cooperate when we're filling this thing, but you'll find ways to make it work, or at least stop being surprised when it takes a few tries. Setup is slowed down by all the bottle sorting, but you'll get the hang of it. The gameplay has just enough take that and oh no you don't moves to help you understand why you're not playing this solo. All in all, we got into this one way more than we expected. What can I say? It's family-friendly fun, it's got clever components and well-designed mechanics. Since there's not a lot of long-term strategy, it's best to just focus on the turn at hand and let yourself have fun with it. Planning the fate of every marble in the dispenser would only tear your mind to shreds. Since there's a shelf for every game, I see us hanging on to this one and breaking it out when newer converts come to the table. And maybe even just when we're in the mood for something lighter. Well, that's all the time we've got for this Pirate's Parlay. Make sure you stop back in for more tomfoolery with your favorite band of merry scallywags. And make sure to get that costume put together. It is almost Halloween after all. <laughs>